I know, I know what I have. I know what I'm capable of. And I can't, as long as I have that on my side, don't lose sight of that. Yeah. I'm going to get this work. Yeah, okay, right. we going to do the job. <laughs> <laughs> and it is very tough. I'm like, yo. I'm like, Melanin goddess that's before me. Hello. On this episode of Another Act, I talk with Danielle Brooks about her Orange is a New Black evolution, her love of live theater, and what her new role as a superhero means for, well, all of us. You know, Danielle, I want to go all the way back to when you and I first met, which actually was kind of when the world first met you. This was after the first season of Orange is a New Black. What were your expectations for your career in Hollywood after that really kind of colossal introduction to your work? Thank you so much. Yeah, I definitely remember meeting you and just being all and seeing someone that looked like me on the other end. I was so like, whoo, I felt like a sigh of relief because it's such a huge world, this entertainment business in Hollywood, and it, it can be very overwhelming, you know, so it just made me very happy to see you. For my career, it's blossoming in a way that I have always prayed for and hoped for. And it's like just trusting the process and continuing to like just find my feet and ground myself within the process has helped me tremendously. But it's been really good to kind of like say, oh, yeah, this is a lot. This is, I don't, I just want to act. I don't, all this stuff, you know, it's too much. Like I got to like shed all of this expectation that I had on myself and shed all of this stuff that I feel pressured from Hollywood to be and just be me and do the work and it's led me to moments like this and many other things that I wish I could share now but I can't <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm ready I'm ready for those industry you know deadline THR news <laughs> about what you have going on to drop but what you have given us honestly in the last few years has been excellent you know I was a really big fan of the work you did and the film that just stunned Sundance a couple years ago. Like, I feel like I was like hitting you up while you were on stage, you know, kind of collecting, collecting those bows. And I expect that you probably want to experience more, more moments like that. But what is it that you're looking for at this point in your, in your career? Yeah, I've been able to do like fun stuff like clemency and, you know, getting to guest spot on fun shows like high maintenance and girls and, you know, getting to play Mahalia was a lot of fun. But this one really, this one is special to me because getting to shed and rip apart the box that I feel people continuously put black plus size women in, I get to like break that ish open. And that is fun. Like that is what it's all about. And that's what I've always hoped that my career would do. And so like, I've never seen anyone like myself in any one of these DC or Marvel shows or movies. I get to say like, let's like get rid of this dumb myth that plus size women over 200 pounds are invalids and we can't do anything but tell a joke. Like there's so much more that we can do besides like shed a good tear. Like there's so much more there. And so I'm excited to to show that. Uh, especially because when I started this, I was 60 pounds heavier because I just had my daughter Mm. and I was nervous about, will I be enough? Can I do this? And James Gunn was like, girl, I wrote this for you. Just come in and be yourself. I got you. And he did. And he did not, he never in this process made me feel like who I was in that moment was not capable of doing the job. This task force doesn't officially exist, which leaves us on our own. That guy's a clown. But there's something about him that's sad. Your dad is not a good man. It's the family. We just got shot at! You haven't been shot at? No. Two jerks in costumes and a couple of rejects. Woo! One thing that I have always admired about you is this really confidence and the self-awareness that you have that I think is so, you know, paramount to, to even being in this industry in the first place. How do you maintain that confidence in an industry that isn't always kind, if ever, quite frankly, <laughs> yeah. to, to women who look like yourself, who look like me? Like what, like, where does that come from and how has that been 
to kind of maintain that that same level of confidence to even take on a project like this? I think there's so many great examples of Black women out here, you know, from Viola, from Natalie DeSalle was one of my favorite actors. But the thing that I take from them is their stories. They share their stories. They share their struggles. They share how hard it was to get to where they are. I'm 10 years in the game and and some of these women are 20, 30 years in the game. Alfre Woodard, you know, they've been doing this for a very long time. It hasn't been easy for them. But the thing that I admire is that they never lose their selves in it. And if they do, they have people around them to help remind them of who they are. And that's been my biggest thing, my foundation, my friends, my family. They keep me level-headed. My husband now, because I'm married. Congratulations. <laughs> um, they keep me grounded and remind me who Danielle Brooks is. I know what I have. I know what I'm capable of. And I can't, as long as I have that on my side, don't lose sight of that. Yeah. I'm going to get this work. Yeah, okay. Right. We're going to do the job. <laughs> We gonna get it done. <laughs> and the thing is that that confidence and that strong sense of self is what led you to to Peacemaker, of course, as you talked about. Just the fear, the the, the mere visual of of this character is something that we don't ever get to see in this particular universe. Tell me about that first phone call. I don't know if it was from James Gunn or if it was from someone in casting, but that first phone call that this was this was being written for you, that this was a project they wanted you for uniquely. What was that like? Yeah, it was crazy. Cause again, I was like sitting at home. I just had a baby. I'm like, I had in the, when I had my daughter or when, before I had my daughter, I had um, gotten an opportunity to do an action movie and I had to turn it down because I couldn't travel being pregnant. And that just was kind of discouraging because you're like, man, that was my opportunity. That was the moment I was going to be an action movie. And then you realize, nah, there's what is for you is going to be for you and it's not going to stop. It's going to, like, you will come to it. It'll find you. And that's what this moment was. James Gunn was a big fan of Orange. He was like, yo, I want her. I wrote this for her. And thank God he did. We got on one Zoom call meeting. We talked about the character, about the story. I asked him how he worked as a director, you know, what he was looking for. And it it aligned. And then he told me, you know, your mom in this is going to be Viola Davis. And I was like, oh, snap. That's all you got to say. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You should have led with that. They ain't got no, okay. Even though the only scenes I had with her were over a phone. (laughs) Because we were shooting. (laughs) But it still was exciting. (laughs) That's the same when I worked with, uh, for Clemency. It's like I did this movie with Alfred. It didn't even get any moments with him. I know. I I want to see that moment in that movie. But but you were so impactful. And and when I first saw Clemency at Sundance, I was like, this is literally Viola Davis in doubt, you know, from mm-hmm. 2008, I believe. Mm-hmm. Then to full circle, have you now working in, in some ways uh, with Viola? It had to feel pretty special for you too, I would imagine. It does. We're both South Carolina women. Yeah. We both went to Juilliard. We both chocolate. Uh, there's just so many things. I, I I just admire the way she moves in life. And I just pray that when my career, I can do that for someone else my way. Yeah. You know, that's what I pray. So, yeah. yeah. What was it like, you know, shooting this, this project and what was, and how did you prepare yourself, you know, for, for this particular character? Yeah, I had to get familiar with the world a little bit because I, I hadn't, I don't know DC like that. And so I had to do some work and get familiar, even more familiar because I knew James Gunn's work, but I didn't realize it was James Gunn's work. Like Guardians of the Galaxy. And um, and we got to screen the Suicide Squad that he did, which was so good. So just getting familiar with his work, getting familiar with the script because it, it it's so, genres are different like the way in which you read and and inhale a script is can be completely different so orange is different from from this and we're talking about black ops squads and butterflies and this and that i was like okay 
sometimes I really was confused on what was going on, you know, and, and all this language is different lingo that you're starting to learn. So just kind of taking my time with the script and, and getting familiar and then bringing myself to it. That was the most fun. I think he left a big open space for me to bring myself and to say as much as green as Adebayo is, Danielle is just as green. Adebayo ain't never worked no gun and Danielle ain't either. So let's figure this out. It, it was so much fun to get to like, to do that and learn as my character learned and grow as well. Yeah. Now people know who you are. They've seen something that you've done because the, the beauty of, of your work so far is that it has really kind of crossed theatrical disciplines, I should say, but let's, let's remind the people and slash, or let the people know <laughs> you have conquered Broadway, color yes. purple amongst others, of course, <laughs> drama, historical figures, Mahalia Jackson was brilliant and now action. And I know that a big part of of your trajectory is that you really aspire to show a black woman executing, you know, a range of roles. Tell yes, me about yeah. how, how Peacemaker aligns with maybe your personal mission with, um, with navigating Hollywood. Oh yeah. It, it, you hit it right on the nail. It definitely aligned with my mission to break these walls and, and, and show people just the capability of, of what someone like myself can do. You know, I'm just a Southern girl, you know, that got blessed enough to go to Juilliard. And I, I did not grow up in Hollywood. I did not grow up in this industry. I did, um, there's so much learning that I had to do of myself and of how this industry moves and works. And it is very tough. But the biggest thing is you really have to be yourself and be okay with who you are and, and be secure in the talent that you have. And if you're not getting what you want, go discover how ways to make it yourself. And that's why I'm in awe of, of this generation, of um, all of these women, Marcy Martin and Lena Waith and a girl Issa, you know, and Yvonne, everybody, the way we're moving, Uzo, you know, it's very much in awe of that. And uh, they, it's just all of us continue to shed light and show that there is space for all of our differences to flourish and, and be great. Um, and I'm glad to be a part of it. And then there's moments, you know, you, you get nervous that you might get lost in the sauce, you know, that, you know, you, you're not, your light's not shining bright enough. I feel like that's when I just remind myself, this is, that's when you're laying the foundation, that groundwork, that's, Sometimes when you're quiet, it's when you're working the most and, you, and you're setting the, the, the foundation for yourself. I've been very blessed to get to work still during a pandemic uh, with Mahalia, with Peacemaker, like, like to be like nominated for things and all of that. Um, I I'm, I'm just pray that I just continue to be that example for somebody else to say, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. We'll see. Only time will tell. But I'm trying to lay that brick, boy. <laughs> I'm trying to lay it down. <laughs> but you know, you're you know this about yourself. You're doing it and then some. And what I really also love about kind of watching your journey is that you really are making your own rules as you are moving along. Like when you popped up with a whole, you know, track that gave like this anthemic, you know, kind of. Uh, oh, the royal call you, for sis. black women. Everybody was like, um, thank you, you could, we figured you could sing because of the Juilliard background. I mean, I know not everyone also <laughs> sings when they go to Juilliard, but I figured you could sing because of that. And obviously I knew that you, you had done some work on Broadway, but I, I didn't see like an album, you know what I mean? Coming right. from you, you obviously saw that for yourself. Tell me about, you know, how you are kind of mapping out what you want to do in the future and the types of things that maybe you're even telling your 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 team that you that you want to do like don't be afraid to bring yeah. this kind of project to me because I'm looking for that sometimes I try to move it's weird I mean I'm being too personal because I know you but sometimes I be trying to move like these white men out here it's like they get to do all of it they get to do all of the things why can't we do all of the things like I, when I went to Juilliard I played Queen Elizabeth 
Now, I know I ain't going to play Queen Elizabeth in no movie, but that showed me that I have the capability. Like, that's what this thing we do is. It's about expanding your imagination and, and, and just creativity, you know? And so I just feel like that's what just makes me, that moment just reminded me, like, I can do anything. Stop limiting me, you know? So when I talk to my team, I remind them, like, let's like move differently. When you read a script, please don't just give me what you know I can kill and do in my sleep. Give me something that you know is going to challenge me and make me stay up all night figuring out how to do this thing. You know, that's what I want. And I continue to try to do that, like you said, crossing genres of, of theater and, and voiceovers and TV movies, all of it, and producing and things. But I also am like trying to learn. That's what it, the biggest thing for me is I don't have all the answers, but I'm trying to learn because I want to, there's so many people I want to put on. There's so many people and talents that I'm like, yo, nobody know. Amber Iman is one of the amazing, the biggest, amazing voice, amazing voice you could ever hear. Mm. Amazing. Michael Kilgore, the same thing. Like in her talent, she's an actor. She's incredible. And I just feel like that's what I want to do is like, I know how hard it was for me in my 10 years, you know, in school and stuff to get where I am. It's just like, if I could just give someone else the push the same way that these other women that have come before me have given me that lift up. That's what it's really about. So as cheesy as it sounds, that's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's a good goal. And obviously you're right. What we are seeing from your from your generation of, of women in particular and Black women in this industry is really taking matters into your own hands and being really the, um, the controllers, I guess, of your own destiny. We're seeing you guys do things that the generation before you didn't do because they didn't, they didn't, they didn't feel empowered, you know, to do that. They didn't know that they could do that. So it's really nice to see a lot of you guys getting producer credits, bringing in writers and producing projects that you're not even necessarily starring in. Um, I know that has to feel powerful. I would it think. does. It feels like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I got my slippers on. <laughs> it feels like, yeah, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, so many beautiful things happened for you in 2021. You know, Mahalia Jackson, and now, you, you know, you were filming Peacemaker in 2021. You got married, and obviously your continued embrace of motherhood. Your daughter is so delicious. I thanks. am obsessed with all things. What are you looking forward to in 2022? What types of things are you uh, looking forward to dropping on us uh, this yeah, year? There's so many things and I wish I could share. Hopefully you'll have me back so I can talk about some of this stuff. Yes. But just expanding. And I really feel like this year I got to really... Uh, crossed over already you know all of these different projects have just is really stretching me I just pray for the positioning of that for myself so we'll see that's that's my personal hope um and not for the fame reasons it's just the respect for the craft yeah. that's what matters the most to me um, the respect for the craft, you know, and, and and I feel like when you have that, when when you've been given that gift of recognition, it's like people are saying, "I see myself in you." Mm. That's a huge compliment, mm. you know, like yeah. because that's what we're supposed to be as actors, reflective. Mm -hmm. It's like we're you're supposed to see yourself. You're supposed to see the good, the bad, what makes us human, you know, and that's what I just. Um, pray for in my career. Mm. I love that you said respect of the craft because you obviously have that. It shows in all the projects that you've selected, including this new one, Peacemaker. Danielle, thank you so much for doing thank this you. show. I really appreciate you. <laughs> oh, I love it. I watch this show all the time and it's been so great. I watched your interviews with the Heart of They Fall cast and all of, all of it, I've watched it. And it's just been great to see you do your thing. And again, like to see someone that looks like me in your position, it's it's not to be taken lightly. So Kelly, you're a rock star. 
and we still supposed to get lunch or something. <laughs> we, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I mean, I, I don't know. Once you stop being a marquee star and you get a five-minute break. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna come happen. out no, with I'm, you. I'm, 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 I don't want that to ever happen. Look, I gotta come out with you and Gabrielle Union one of these old times. Let's, let's, let's karaoke. Do it. In. <laughs> let's let you know we karaoke. We're gonna do that, and I'm gonna hold you to it, Danielle. Thank you so yes. much. I really appreciate thank you. you.